so hello everyone again and welcome to my channel so in here we're going to be looking at the part two of the mac mirror reaction as this is involved in the synthesis of the indoor reaction so in here we're going to look at this focus reaction where we have to transform this particular reagent into this one and then this will be transformed into that and this is our target goal and this has the outdoor transformation or formation which is actually reviewed over in this particular region over there so in here we're going to transform two amino 5 chlorobenzophenol into an into bracket two benzenol four chlorophenyl into bracket oxyamic acid and then we're going to transform this using a particular process into an ethyl 5 chloro 3 phenyl indole 2 carboxylate guys I know this is really really complicated names you don't have to memorize it you just need to just know okay how does this name in each translate translated to this particular structure that's just a little thing you need to know but never memorize it uh, anyways just a little joke right there but now talking about the indoor reaction the most important thing about this particular McMurray reaction or the indoor formation is how McMurray works. McMurray takes advantage of the low valence electrons of this particular titanium catalyst and how this particular titanium catalyst is going to be involved in the coupling of either an aldehyde or a ketone. So it's truly really, really fascinating how this is going to only work out and now looking at this in focus Look at how this reaction is going to work out. Let's take for example, we have a particular ketone over here. What happens in this case is that once you have this ketone, another ketone coming together, and now you're going to do this in the presence of titanium. What happens then is that we're going to form a particular complex where we have this titanium surface over here. And this titanium surface has the oxygen attached which is this oxygen here attached to the two uh, groups and then you have a carbon-carbon coupling with the other ketone group over there and then you have your R and R group over there and now what that leads is the formation of a particular but first you need to know that this titanium over here is actually titanium zero but now what happens next is that there's actually a formation of a double bond between the two. That is the titanium and the oxygen, therefore resulting in the cleaving off of this particular carbon over there. Therefore, what that leads is the formation then of an R group over there, another R group, and then we have one electron left outside over there. And then on the other side, we have this other oxygen, or I would say uh, ether formation over there. And then we have our, our group position outside over there. Now, what happens next is that this titanium over here donates another electron, despite the fact that we know that electrons have been donated, one electron donating from this titanium, one donate electron donating. Uh, contributing to the formation of this bond and on the other side we have another electron that has been contributing that leads to the formation of a double bond here and now we're going to do that over here where the titanium also needs one more electron to form another double bond and then this other one electron then reacts with this particular electron over there to form a double bond so what that leads is the formation of a double bond between the bulky groups over there. So, and then results in the titanium with two double bonded carbons attached to the surface of this particular group over there. So in here it's going to be interesting because this nuclear reaction is under the steric hindered arcane. So in this case here we are going to be focusing more on steric hindered arcane. And in this case here titanium 2 plus is actually the one that reacts with the esters and the ketones to create new carbon-carbon bond. So 
What are the things that I need to know in terms of the reaction and what are the reagents required for me to go from this to that and then from this to that. So let's tag here. So in here, let's look at A, A, we're going to require this particular compound, which is actually at the top over there. And I'm going to label this as one. We're going to react one with the presence of pyridine. And this is going to be included in an ethyl chlorooxyalate. So by including ethyl chlorooxyalate, this will be done in the presence of a particular solvent, which is actually DCM. And once that is done, what we do next is by including Na. HCO3 into the reaction which is in the presence of also DCM and what that does is that you're able to extract this particular product which we have over here in the organic phase which is the DCM over there so that's about it for the extraction of this organic and then the next part, which is our B, which is the transformation of this particular compound into that, which is an indoor process. What we need to know is that our product over here, let's make this as two. What we do for two is that we include zinc dust in the presence of titanium chloride. And then we're going to include all this in the presence of DCM. And this here, which is an organic solvent, what that leaves is that we undergo this transformation where we form carbon-carbon bonds and then that leads into the formation of double bonds. And that is how we're able to form this particular compound over here. So this particular region over here will be coming from one of the ketones and while this region over here is coming from the other ketone over there which is this particular point or carboxyl group over there and this carboxyl group over there so let's look at the full reaction mechanism for this particular process so the full mechanism for this particular process involves the first we're going to look at how we're going to form this particular point or this point of contact over here going from this to that so let me move over to the next page and then focus more on that focus yes focus focus yes nice so what we have here is that we have the first reagent over there so what we do then is that don't forget that we have lone pairs there and over here we have the phenyl with the carboxyl group over there and then we have the other reagent, which, which is the ethyl chlorooxyl acetate, which we have over there as well. Quite fascinating because we also have these adjacent carboxyl groups. And then we have our ester over at this particular region over there. So what happens next is that there's a kind of a pushing arrow where this lone pair over here attacks this particular carboxyl group over here and the carbon over here that pushes the electrode over to the oxygen the oxygen lone pair reforms to form the double bond here and that leads to the formation of a living group living this particular compound now what that results is the formation of this particular compound over there thereby forming a nitrogen carbon bond and quite fascinating that we're going to be able to form also a positive charge on the nitrogen despite the fact that we have two hydrogens over there and or oh, let me just remove one of this hydrogen and put the hydrogen beside the nitrogen over there and then we have a carbon over there with this other side over there and the ether group over there and on the other side we have our ester with the phenyl over there so quite fascinating that that is happening, but don't forget that we do have chloride over there with negative charge 
and it has a couple of lone pairs. Now one of these lone pairs actually extracts this hydrogen that is pointing over there and then that leads to the formation of a neutral nitrogen thereby making this bonding pair to become a lone pair on this oxygen and what that leads is the formation of this particular product over there which is actually our number two which is in the middle of the overall reaction that is in the previous page of this particular video so that is about it for the first step which is actually A now our B section is going to be targeting on the formation of the indole and this indole is actually more of the McMurray process now the McMurray process we know that we're going to have tin with titanium sorry with chlorine and the titanium actually has a valence of 2 and this other side here is like a surface this is the surface of the catalyst and other part here which is the same species with the valence of 2 and having 2 chlorines attached to the titanium now what happens then is that this titanium donates one electron to the oxygen while the oxygen bonding with the carbon which is actually the pi electrons one of the electrons actually leaves it and then from a particular bond with the one electron that has been donated by the titanium so what the resource in this particular process don't forget also that we do have another double bond on the carbon with oxygen and then we have our CO2E3 and the same process also happens at this other region over there so painting the picture with the red pen one electron comes off this low bond, double bond one of the electrons actually moves over to form a bonding pair and the other electron over there stays on the carbon to form a radical on the other side or I could say that this actually bond electron the, as the same thing also happens over there we have one electron coming in this one electron then forms here the other electron there interacts with this other electron so that this carbon and carbon will form a carbon carbon bond which is actually a sigma bond so you are going from a pi bond back to the formation of a sigma bond and on the other side we are having double uh, a single bond between each of these particular groups over there so what that leads is the formation of this particular product over there or uh, our set intermediate where we are going to have a valence now of three titanium on the other side you have a valence of three over there and what happens then is that we have oxygen one bond oxygen on the other side we have carbon we have carbon over there and then what happens then is that it's a carbon carbon bond over there and then we have a phenyl group over there and in here we have this little group over there with the chlorine attached over there and there you have the nitrogen with the hydrogen attached over there and this nitrogen is attached to the carbon and this carbon is attached to this ester over there in our region so what happens next is that this titanium also donates another electron and then this carbon bond here with the oxygen then removes one electron and then reforms a double bond over here and this bond actually cleaves off right and this other electron now stays on the carbon or it forms the same thing happens over there where one of these electrons comes over there and this bond here cleaves off and one of the electrons forms a double bond over there and this other electron that is here then reforms a double bond thereby it interacts with this electron to form a bond over there thereby going from a sigma bond into a pi bond so by that way you're forming a carbon carbon bond which is actually a double bond over there and take note that there's a change in the valence electrons over there thereby resulting in the transformation from titanium 3 to titanium 4 so what that release is going from titanium 
3 to the 34 and then you have a double bond over there and then you form your phenyl groove which forms a double bond between the carbon and carbon over there and the other side we have C O2 ET and then you have your nitrogen with the hydrogen over there and move this upwards you have this over there forming a carbon bond over there and then you have your benzene group which is attached to the chlorine over there so this is our target product which is actually the final step in our B section and this is actually the McMurray process of the mechanism and now one important thing is that you remember that I talked about zinc dust that is included over there now what's interesting here is that the zinc dust actually is used to actually reduce our compound thereby or I would say oxidize it in a way oh sorry I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to actually use to reduce the titanium 4 back to titanium 2 so what that leads is that you have this particular process where you have zinc 0 being oxidized to form zinc 2 plus and then your titanium 4 sorry this is meant to be 4 titanium 4 with oxygen and then chlorine over there then transforms into tin, uh, titanium sorry to titanium 2 so I zinc and titanium 2 the oxygen over there so that's about it you're transforming zinc 0 into zinc 2 plus so therefore we are going to have an oxidation happening here and over here we are having a reduction of titanium into titanium oxide so thanks again for following me through this process i truly appreciate it if you like it please don't forget to hit the like button share and subscribe with everyone around here have a good day peace love you all and be smart